Welcome back to Little Muffet Classic, another episode of Daily Driving a Classic Weekly, where I daily drive this 1975 XJ6, or at least I usually do. It's been off the road now for a couple weeks because I've just put a new interior in it. If you haven't seen that video, I'll put a link to it up above and down below so you can check that out. But before I get it back completely on the road, I want to fit a radio. It had a radio before, but it's one of those modern retro units with Bluetooth, and I never really liked the look of it and um, the functionality. Just, I didn't like the way it worked. Um, I like to be pretty old school in cars. My favorite media for uh, music and cars is really cassettes. I think it's excellent. I love cassettes and I have a lot of them. So a couple, probably a couple months ago now, I picked this thing up really cheaply on eBay. It uh, powered on, it said, but that the uh, cassette wasn't playing at the right speed. With shipping everything, it was something like less than $10. So I want to see if I can get this thing set up and working so we'll take it apart look inside see if we can service it if see uh, if I can find out why it's playing at the wrong speed and hopefully get it working and in the car I just did a whole bunch of things and realized the camera wasn't rolling so I'm very very sorry about that but don't worry you didn't miss too much the only thing I did was take this thing apart or before that I verified the issue from the previous uh, or the person selling it that it wasn't playing at the right speed was playing way too fast and there's no adjustment on these later set decks there is a little optical eye down there which reads that speed on the wheel there and that sets the speed and it should be perfectly correct so I was very very mystified why it wasn't playing correctly and why it was fast and just while having a look at it I found it if you can see if it can focus Right there you have the capstan, so the capstan roller, that's really what governs the speed in any tape based machine. If you see right there, this machine has at some point in the past eaten a cassette tape, and has wound its way around the capstan, made the capstan thicker, and if that's thicker it will play faster. So that is really the issue. Hopefully, at least that's what I think it is, so what I'm going to do is I will clean off that tape there, it's a bit too fiddly to uh, uh, film, clean this off with some isopropyl alcohol. I will also clean off the tape head a little bit. Might still have an issue because it's playing louder from one side than the other, so this might be misaligned. So I might still have to line that, but this is at least great news. So I will start by cleaning this off. We'll put this back together, and then I'll remember to hit record this time when I show you what it sounds like. I can only play very short snippets because I don't want to get any copyright strikes with music. But um, let's put this all together, clean up, and see if it actually plays at the right speed now. So this is all of the tape that I got off the capstan. So this machine has at some point chewed up the tape and wrapped around the capstan, causing the speed to be incorrect. So now you can see down there, or hopefully you can see caps and it's just metal now as it should be however what I have done is I removed the belt it's just on the back here and I looked it over it's still in good condition I have a bag of assorted different belts because I like to mess with old cassette players both in cars and you know the big home ones but this one is still in really good condition so I'm going to put it back and now I just want to do a couple things to this device before we put it together but I'm not going to assemble it completely because I want to test that the speed is correct and then hopefully everything's working as it should. So the other thing I'm going to do is just lubricate it a little bit. I've already done most of it. Just use a light oil on the end of a q-tip and just lubricate a couple places and I've removed the belt so I can sort of work everything back and forth but it is running very smoothly. All the gears and everything seem to be working well. However, I do want to clean the head, which is down there, and I do want to clean the capstan, and I'm going to carefully clean the roller a little bit as well. Just um, you know, be careful, don't put too much on it. The best thing to clean these with is isopropyl alcohol on a little bit of a cotton, cotton Q-tip like this on the end, and just make sure that you don't leave any uh, of this behind. So. And get some on the q-tip now so it's a fairly simple job just you know rub it across the playhead in the direction that the tape goes across it and I hope you can see 
it's already a lot cleaner. There were some dark lines up there. In case you're wondering if you're cleaning it or not, look at the Q-tip there. You can see the dirt coming off it, so you're definitely cleaning it up. I'm going to swap to the other end and just put some more alcohol on there and do just one more clean. And yeah, it's still coming out a little dirty, so we'll continue a little bit. I'm going to go a little bit over here on the edge. And that's a very nice clean one now. I'll take a clean, dry Q-tip and just dry it off. Even though this stuff should not leave a residue on there, it's still a good idea to clean it off. And you see the Q-tip came off nice and clean. So now I'm going to do the same thing with the capstan. I'm just going to pretend that a tape is in there so I can get the mechanism up and I'll clean that as well. On some players you can get to this capstan while it's spinning. If you can then that is a great way to clean it. But uh, I have this all taken apart so I will spin it myself with the belt off underneath and as you can see it is very dirty and that is really one of you know the causes of a tape machine eating the tape one course could be that your, your tape is in bad condition that you're actually playing or you have a component inside that's dirty so if the tape would just stick to this because it's running in between here but if it then sticks to one of these areas it will want to do a lap and you'll pretty quickly have a stuck tape that's ruining your machine. I got a little bit more cleaning to do here and then we're ready to put this all back together. It's all cleaned up now and I'm happy with it. So I'm going to put the belt back on. There we go, that's running smoothly. Now, since we missed the part about taking this apart, um, on some tape decks or like this, you can't get the mechanism out very easily. However, on these type of blow punks, they all pretty much work the same. If it's a London, a Montreal, they have like a whole unit that comes out as one piece. So there's only two plugs to plug it back in. But I mean, the whole principle of just checking over the machine, seeing if it works as it should, it's the same on every single one. Just, you know, make sure it's nice and clean inside, that the belt is okay, and that nothing is broken. There we go, that's in place. I'm gonna plug in the, the lead as well. And then there are one, two, three, four screws here. Let's see, you gotta line them up. There we go. I'll put all those in now and then we'll hook up some power and then speaker I have laying around and let's see if it plays well now. It's all back together now and here is just my little simple bench setup for testing one of these. Just a car battery and a speaker. It's just a normal home hi-fi speaker. So I just made a cable with the correct in connection on the back here and then just connecting you know the earth and the positive over to the battery here. As you can see it switches on. You heard the speaker make a little sound. That's the dial for the frequencies for the radio tuner. The little light behind there lights up. Unfortunately the little light right there doesn't light up. That's the one for these buttons up front. So I'm gonna have a look if I can uh, see what it is and maybe order something. Not something I'll fix at this moment, but maybe I can get a hold of one and fix that in the future. But now let's see if this actually plays the tape. And if it does, I'm only gonna be able to play like a second or so of it, just because I don't wanna have any copyright strikes due to basically everything is copyrighted music having a chance to make a mixtape with something non-copyrighted. Maybe we'll do that in a future video if we do more things with old uh, car tape players. 
But now let's see if this works. This tape is a little bit on the worn side. It's easy to talk where it hits, but it's one of those tapes that if something happens to it, it's not the end of the world. Let's turn it on, put the tape in. All right, that's all I'm gonna play, but as you can see, it is working and it seems to be at the correct speed. That's definitely at the correct speed. It was way too fast before. Fortunately, it's not on tape, but it was, you know, Mickey Mouse fast or on helium. But we got fast forward working. And inject. Let's see if we have rewind. Okay, we don't have rewind. Let's try that again. All right, if you hold it in, it has rewind. That's also one thing that I want to talk about with these sort of old um, machines, because I've spent a lot of time working on hi-fi equipment home. One of my other big interests is just music in general, and especially equipment that plays music. And if you have a tape player that hasn't run for a while, just run it. Run tapes through it. It might be a little... You know, uneven in the beginning, but once everything starts moving again and you know working, it usually works better after a while. So maybe uh, in the beginning you'll notice some slight variations in speed, but just give it a couple tapes and you know use to fast forward, use to rewind, and everything should start working again. Yeah, so that is all working as it should. Right now, hopefully I'm not going to get any copyright strikes for that. Otherwise, I guess I'll have to go in and do something about that. But now, I'm just going to put all of this back together. It is uh, really quite, quite easy. The front panel here just clicks into place. Just make sure you line up this, all the switches. Then you got the little volume knob. Press this into place. And on block punk devices, the top and bottom panels are just pushed into place. No screws or anything like that. So I'll put all of that together and then we're ready to install this in the car. And just one more thing I realized I forgot to test of course is before I had the issue that it wasn't really playing from both sides. So now I hooked up the speaker cable to the right side and let's see. Yeah, it's playing from there as well. So I think the tape on the caps then that was rolled on there was causing everything to be misaligned. So you kept hearing it was way too fast and I would hear the other side of the tape as well. So all of that is fixed now and I will put it in the car. The radius around is back in place and I've done a lot of cleaning up. I removed, among other things, this whole jumble of wires along with yeah, just lots of other things and made it really simple. So there is black wire here is ground. This is ignition and this thing doesn't have memory or anything so it doesn't need anything else. It just needs power on from ignition and the ground. Here is the radio antenna which I'm a little bit curious about because whoever installed the previous device hid a radio antenna under here which I will remove in a bit. I've just put the cables over there and I found the original radio antenna cable here, and there is an antenna on the back of the car, so it's not the original electric one, but it's a large antenna, so it should work, because the old radio never really got any good reception. And then I just uh, used the existing speaker cables and put these connectors on. So I'm going to try sliding this thing in here now, locking it into place, hooking all this up, and hopefully really soon we'll have some music in the car again. There we go. It's all in and it's working. So turn on the ignition. Or actually I'll show you first that it's ignition switch. So nothing going on there. Turn on the ignition. Comes on. All right, I'm not complaining more than that. Once again, due to copyrights, but everything is working as it should. Now the only thing left to do for me is to clean up all of this. I had everything in place when I put the interior in. However, I ended up removing so much wiring that I took all this apart. So I will, you know, put all this back together and then, you know, next couple days or so, I'll roll the car outside and then we will go for a little drive and I will show you the new interior out in the sun 
but that will be in a future video. And that's it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed that little bit of tinkering, even though it wasn't really on the car. It was on one of these old cassette radios. Sorry that some of the footage was lost during the beginning, but you didn't miss much. You just missed me trying it out, and it was playing way too fast, and really only out of one of the speakers, and then I took it apart. But the funny thing is that we found what the issue was pretty easy. It was just some tape wrapped around the capstan, probably because it was dirty. Everything is nice and clean now. I have played a couple tapes through it, and so far hasn't chewed any of them up, and it's been working really well. So if you want to maybe see more of this sort of content, I do have a couple other vintage radios. Here's one of them as an example, which I would like to get going. This one doesn't really play at all. It turns on, it lights up, and it will play like a little bit of the tape at the correct speed, and then it'll go really slow. And then it's sort of, so something's definitely stuck or weird inside. And I would like to fit this one in the XJ12, just because I think it suits the way it looks. It is about the correct period and I like the silver on black with the black and silver interior in that car. So let me know if that's something you want to see in a future video. Anyways, if you like this video, please give a thumbs up, share it with your friends. If you're not already subscribed to the channel, please do subscribe to the channel. It really does help out a lot. Anyways, until next time, I'm Adam and this was Little Mythic Classic. I'll see you soon.